Installation consists of assembling the SC Project exhaust as you attach it to the XSR900 at the engine and at the frame. We'll go over those two key areas before getting started. The way it attaches to the engine is a little bit different from the original. The way the original works, there are these pieces here that are permanently attached to the pipe. And then these flanges snug up against these, these nuts hold that up to the engine. And this is then pressed into the cylinder head and sealed by this crushable copper gasket material, which is disposable. So you'll need to buy a new set of these. They're about $5 each. The way the new system attaches to the cylinder head is a little bit different from this old system in the sense that now there is this intermediate piece that is going to press against the copper gasket. It will be pressed against that by a similar flange, but that thing is not attached to the pipe in any way except for by a spring. We have the mounting point here, which on the original exhaust system consists of these two points with bolts coming in from either side. On the new unit, we only have one bolt, and then this thing is gonna basically just hold itself to one of the points that the factory unit held itself to two of. So getting ready to install the exhaust on the XSR900, I'm gonna take a look at the manual and see what it has to say. There's really only one section that I found relevant to the exhaust, which is section five, page three. So it basically details the removal of the exhaust for the purpose of removing the engine. So it's got the information you need there, just kind of a weird place to find it. So you can see here the copper seals, which I bought a new set of here. It says new, and that basically is their nomenclature for when you do any work and you have to remove these, don't reuse them. You have to replace those with new ones. And LS is lithium soap based grease. So they basically want you to grease these seals up when you install them. That means that the old ones were installed with grease and that stuff will have gotten pretty gunky by now. So if you take a look over at the engine, you can see residue all around that surface where that seal has to be made. So I'm gonna clean that up before I install the new seals with their new grease. When you're working to clean the exhaust ports on the cylinder head, you wanna be really careful. It's an aluminum cylinder head, so you wanna be sure not to scratch these surfaces. So I'm gonna scrape away the grease that's built up there very carefully using one of these little plastic razor blades and even so being careful not to get any grit on the razor blade and then scraping it along the surface. I'm actually not really going to scrape the ceiling surface but this region perpendicular to it where the buildup is concentrated here and then as I'm getting this cleaned off I'm going to periodically wipe it off on a shop towel just to make sure that it doesn't end up falling inside the engine. Okay, so I got the worst of the grease off. I'm just gonna run through with a degreaser now. Simple green on a shop towel. All right, so looking at what we have to do to install the exhaust system here, lithium soap based grease, I think it's just Yamaha's way of saying they want some lithium based grease. And since this is for the exhaust system, obviously this is gonna be pretty warm. So I'm gonna use this generic high temperature wheel bearing and disc brake grease, which is lithium complex base. So I'm gonna assume this meets the requirements and pop that puppy open. Then grease me up, woman. Get a little bit of that grease on the finger. Get it on the thumb and then just run it around the surface of this seal. Okay, so we got the seal greased up. This spacer needs to go against the seal with the lip facing the engine. And then this flange thing is gonna be up against this, holding it against the engine over those studs. So I'm just gonna try to prop this all in there as one piece by kinda holding the stack of the three items with my thumb and fingers like this. Work it over the studs coming from the cylinder head like this while I get that copper surface up against the cylinder head. And that's actually looking pretty good. This thing has a little bit of play, so I'm not gonna tighten this all the way down until I get the pipes in there, but I'm gonna get it tight enough now that it holds everything in place so it doesn't just fall out onto the floor by just finger threading these 12 millimeter nuts that came with the motorcycle and not the exhaust. Again, our lithium based high temperature grease then we have our next collar. The lip needs to, to be on the side closer to the engine. Here we're orienting this with the rounded surface towards the engine, the flat up against the spacer, like so. And we do the same trick. Just try to hold the stack of them in one hand like this.
So right now these are just sitting in here loosely so that they don't fall out, but they're basically ready to receive the header pipes for the SE Project exhaust. So next comes the exciting part of actually putting the exhaust system on the motorcycle. I want to start with the front part of it with keeping the parts loose because I don't know if this is going to line up just right the way I assembled it. I have my best guess based on holding this up against the original exhaust system that these are spaced apart and positioned roughly correctly and there is a little bit of play in them, but I don't have these secured at the springs yet so it's just pressure fit together. And I'm just going to hold it up against the motorcycle, being careful not to scratch it too much and get it lined up to these and see if I can get it to fit. So the lineup, it actually looks fairly good. Okay, so now what we got to do is take a spring and stretch it from this mounting point to this mounting point, And that's going to hold this pipe to this three to one collector. These springs are really strong, so you're not going to really be able to stretch this without a use of a special tool unless you got really powerful fingers. And this is a potential scratch your exhaust or punch yourself in the face kind of moment. So you want to be kind of careful and think this through before you do it. That's pretty awkward. Okay, so then there are two more on the other side of this thing. A little bit weird and this this one actually is not the way it was shown in the picture for the manual this tap is on the opposite side of the pipe from what was shown but it works and actually you're still able to rotate the pipes next we're going to proceed with the awkward operation of holding the tubular header thingies up against the cylinder head without scratching up the exhaust and then try to get them all three to feed into the fittings up against the cylinder head here because you got to kind of adjust the positions of these so that they line up to the holes get them to feed into the holes without, you know, getting frustrated and trying to just force things. So just take your time. All right, so we've got the headers installed enough to hold it up into place. Obviously, it's just hanging there, not really secured yet. And I'm a little concerned that the middle pipe is a little bit too short. So the next thing I'm going to do is just stick the spring on this one and see if the spring does a job of pulling that thing home. And if it does, then we're good to go. The flange has a little hole in it that the tip of the spring goes through. It's a little bit hard to get it in there, but just got to be patient and work it. And then get your spring pulling tool over the edge of this. Try to do this without pulling the motorcycle over or smashing my knuckles on anything or scratching things up. So Man, it's pulling my whole body. All right, here we go. Yikes. Okay, that makes me feel a lot better. That spring is very strong. It's stretched very far. So it has pulled that pipe that I was worried about being too short home nicely. So. I'm very happy about that, and now we have to do the next ones. The torque spec for the exhaust header nuts, according to the Yamaha manual, you know that nut there, follow that up to the torque spec it calls out, it is 14 foot-pounds. I would strongly recommend using a torque wrench to tighten the nuts down onto the studs coming from the cylinder head because you do not want to over tighten that guy. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna put a 12 millimeter deep socket on a short extension for a 3 8 inch drive torque wrench. This torque wrench reads in inch pounds. So in inch pounds, that needs to be 168 inch pounds. So this is dialed up and ready to go. And you're seating a seal so you want to tighten this down a little bit at a time on each side to try to do that evenly. Okay, we hit the torque spec on that one. Hopefully we're not too far off on this one. Yep, right there. So I like to do it a couple times just to make sure, but not to go past that torque click. So the first of the three is tightened down. And let's get started on the next one. So I'm gonna to switch to the longer extension for the middle pipe because I got more reaching around the pipes to do. All 
All right, we hit spec on the one on the right, or from the bike's perspective on the left. And I like to see that they clicked at about the same amount of turns. That means I was tightening down that crush washer evenly. So this third exhaust pipe is a little bit of a pain in the butt to tighten the header down on. I, I think you could have tightened the bolts down without putting the headers in, but I didn't like that idea because I wanted to have the pipe itself helping to force the alignment of this fitting because there is some play. The slots in there allow this, this piece to move. So with this pipe being in there, it kind of holds this thing in the position it needs to be in while these are being torqued down. So I like that. And for most of these, it was easy to get a wrench in with an extension onto these nuts when these pipes are here. But for this one bolt here, you can see yeah, this guy right here gets blocked by this pipe here because this pipe curves towards the bolt and that bolt's on the bottom part of the flange. So it really is blocked something fierce for getting a normal straight ratchet arrangement. So what I'm going to do is something I don't normally like to do, which is to use this angle extension piece, it's like an articulated joint, on a longer extension with a shallow socket. That allows me to get this thing on there and connect torque wrench to this, but normally you wouldn't want to use a joint like this when you're trying to do a torque down. So let's do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Back on that one. And that one. Okay, so now we gotta attach the spring to put the downsizer or upsizer adapter piece on to the silencer. So that's already on. So I wanna pull it upward. That way my risk of scratching doesn't hit the silencer. It hits this thing instead. But I incur the risk of punching myself in the face, but I can heal for free, so. That's pretty easy. Now you get this thing free. It's always kind of awkward. So the next awkward operation will be to put the silencer onto this slip-on joint. We have to fit the compression collar over it carefully, trying not to scratch finishes and stuff. And then once it's on, we have to be ready to put the bolts in through the mounting point on the bike. So the, this thing has several pieces. You got the bolt itself. It's got this conical piece here. This is what goes up against the tab on the bike. Then this metal spacer goes on the other side of the tab here. And then this washer goes up against that. The mounting point from the bike goes in between these two washers. So we have to have this thing basically ready to go once that's in position. Otherwise it's gonna be hanging from the exhaust. I don't wanna to push too much on the headers on where they're hanging from the engine. So I'm gonna hold this with my right hand where I'm shoving the silencer forward with my left. And there. Okay, so I gotta get the mounting bolt in through there. So I gotta get this spacer and this big fat washer in between the exhaust tab and the mounting point on the motorcycle and then get this to feed through the both. Okay, that's not too bad. Then we have to get this smaller washer and this nut onto the back of that bolt. Oh, I'm gonna be a little bit paranoid and put some blue Loctite on the 13 millimeter bolt that goes on the back of the exhaust bracket just to make sure it's not gonna vibrate its way loose while I'm riding. Okay, so we got a little bit in there. Okay, get in the 13 millimeter socket on the back on the nut and then switching both of these back to the on mode. Yeah, that's on there real tight and it's got some Loctite. Hopefully that's not gonna come off. Now I'm gonna carefully rotate this compression fitting collar up into the position I wanna see it in. So it's definitely scratching the finish as I do that, but it's the part that it's gonna cover anyhow. So 
I'm just being careful not to let it move forward or backward. Okay, so I'm going to start this compression collar. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. Last step of the installation will be to install the oxygen sensor on the new SA Project exhaust system. Again, this sensor needs to be kept really clean. So I'm planning to put some anti-seize compound on this on these threads here. And I'm going to be very careful not to get the anti-seize compound on the sensor element or in those holes. I chose to use an anti-seize compound that was advertised by the maker as appropriate for oxygen sensor thread. So that's what this is here. It is 3M Car Care Copper Anti-Seize Brake Lube. The basic idea is that it's electrically conductive. So if the sensor needs to ground through the threads, the anti-seize compound allows it to do that. I'm just going to take a little dab of it on my finger. Wipe off the excess because I really don't need that much. There's not much to these threads. And then just really carefully dab it onto the threads. And I'm basically just gonna let the action of screwing it in smear it around because I don't want to overdo this stuff and get it everywhere. And then start finger threading this in. Making sure not to cross thread. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna switch to my oxygen sensor wrench. Okay, and that's good to go. Okay, so then to reinstall it is basically the reverse of taking it out and so to make this easier to do, I had removed these engine case bolts. I just stuck them in here temporarily to store them so I didn't lose them. Take those back out. And then I'm going to connect the oxygen sensor to the connector here, which mounts on the engine case there. This is metal. I don't want to scrape that, so I'm going to try to be careful while I do this. Basically, the side with the the little nub that sticks out has to go on the side with the tab there, thing that was kind of difficult and awkward to remove. Back. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to thread these in by finger tight. Get them finger tight to just hold this in place, not let it scratch the engine up while I'm moving things around. Okay, the last step is retorquing these clutch cover bolts. Yamaha specs 8.7 pound feet, and that would be. 104 inch pounds on my torque wrench. So there's 104. It's a five millimeter Allen bolt. These are threading into aluminum, so you don't want to over tighten these and strip the hole, the threads. 